Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Kentucky lawmakers take another step toward banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy and the bill to bring more security to schools continues to pass through the state legislature. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It's just before six o'clock on this Friday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks so much for waking up with us and hope you all had a great St. Patrick's Day yesterday. Let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. And Brandon, I know that your St. Patrick's Day was kind of fun. You had you a shamrock shake. I did. But what was so funny, let's talk about it. Okay. I was in the line at McDonald's. It's what? And you just drove right by. Listen, you, you didn't do it right. You're I did not. To, you're supposed to order it on the app and then pick it up. Yeah. And bring well, it right out to you, but you were sitting in the long drive through line. I knew around lunchtime there not to do that, so. Well, you know what, I was, I, I just don't, I'm not as wise as you, Brandon. Well, one of these days, when you get as old as me, you'll, you'll be as wise as me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you our time. <laughs> just giving you our time. But yeah, it's a, uh, it was a good day for a shake yesterday. Mm -hmm. Temperatures got well into the 70s, and today, I think we'll get pretty close there, but the rain chances will start to pick up as we go deeper into the day as well. Let's take a look this morning. I-75 at Mount Vernon, no problems down that way. A little bit of traffic moving along there this morning, mostly bigger trucks. We're looking at temperatures down to 38 now in Clinton. Well, that's the coldest spot in the region, though, in southwest Virginia. Even just down the road, it's 52 in Wise, 53 in Pikeville, 57 in Jackson, 44 in London, and 46 in Somerset and Monticello. Average high up to 59 now. 71 is our forecast high before the the rain hit so probably early this afternoon record high set back on this day in 1982 of 81 Dakota all right Brendan thank you well two pieces of legislation getting a lot of attention in Frankfurt are one step closer to going to Governor Andy Bashir's desk a bill legalizing medical marijuana and another banning transgender girls from playing girls school sports passed in the house Chad Hedrick has the latest from Frankfurt but not passionate testimony from Republican Representative Jason Nemus Thursday as his medical marijuana bill came up for a vote. If your physician or your wife's physician or your husband's physician, or God forbid your child's physician, told you that this product works in other states and it will help your child, what would you do? If you would fight for your kid, hit the green button. The bill would legalize medicinal cannabis as a treatment option for patients suffering from conditions like cancer, chronic pain, epilepsy, MS, and post-traumatic stress disorder. It's moving to the Senate, but not without opposition. I didn't come to Frankfurt for liquor, for gambling, or for marijuana. I came here to stand against it. We are asking as a body to go on emotion rather than a legal standpoint. Our federal government has said that marijuana is against the law. Last week, a patient who uses medical cannabis spoke to lawmakers of the benefits he has found. Lawmakers family. telling similar Please stories. Please, let's pass this and allow some people to move on and live a happy life. I know a lot of people that are productive citizens when they use this product responsibly. More intense debate before the House ultimately passed legislation that would ban transgender girls from playing girls' school sports. Supporters say transgender girls have a physical advantage over biological girls. Opponents call it discriminatory and a solution to a non-existent problem. In Frankfurt, Chad Hedrick, WKYT. Well, Governor Bashir is likely, likely to veto the transgender ban bill. He has said he supports the medical marijuana measure. Well, Kentucky lawmakers have taken another step toward banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The bill won Senate passage Wednesday with lawmakers casting an eye toward a looming U.S. Supreme Court decision on abortion rights. The bill is modeled after a Mississippi law under review by the nation's high court in a case that could dramatically limit abortion rights. The Kentucky measure advances next to the House. Senator Max Wise says the preemptive action Kentucky's stricter ban would immediately be enforceable if the Mississippi law were to be upheld. A bill to ensure more police officers are in schools continues to move through the state legislature. House Bill 63 enhances what was passed several years ago and the School Safety Act, which planned to put a school resource officer in every school. The version voted on voted yesterday in the Senate committee sets up a reporting plan from schools to the state school safety center in Richmond to address schools who 
do not have an officer and includes an amendment for districts to create their own campus police departments. The bill would allow uh, the latitude that university police departments have where the officers would have uh, jurisdiction on school buses anywhere in the state on any property owned or, or occupied by the school district. Well, the bill now goes on to the full Senate. If passed there, it will have to get approval in the House because an amendment was added. Well, this week, Lexington Council members learned more about the police department's policies and procedures for using license plate reading cameras. Police say several communities in Western Kentucky already use the cameras, but they're even more common in parts of Indiana. Garrett Weimer tells us what the camera could mean for the Commonwealth. As Greenfield grows, this Indiana community along a historic highway is now lined with new technology. Any traffic coming into our county from Indianapolis, we're capturing their vehicle, you know, a picture of their vehicle and our license plate. The sheriff's office here in Hancock County, just to the east of Indianapolis, has been using flock license plate reading cameras since December 2020. I believe it's up to close to a thousand cases now where flock has played some kind of a vital role in solving that case. Um, whether that be give us travel patterns for a suspect or identify a vehicle in some way, shape or form that has helped. Their nearly two dozen cameras are part of a network of roughly 350 they have access to from sharing with other law enforcement agencies in the area. And we are constantly looking for ways to kind of find these force multipliers that help us, you know, solve more crimes, retrieve more information without burdening the taxpayers with, you know, paying for more officers. Um, budgets are tight all over the place and it's harder to find people now. So these flock cameras seem to be a great way to kind of, you know, track suspects and hopefully get more leads without having to have more kind of boots on the ground, so to speak. Investigators here say it's part of their daily workflow now. They've used the cameras for locating burglary suspects, finding missing people, apprehending folks with high level warrants, recovering several stolen vehicles and stolen property, even for tracking a man wanted and now convicted of attempted murder. We always have to have a lookup reason. Or as a test. Um, this is a, a lookup tool we have. I just put it in there. With a few taps and just waiting a few moments. So there's your vehicle. There's the license plate crossing that camera um, just about a mile south of where we are right now. Finding our car from the drive-in. And then it, it tells me, um, you know, again, the camera location, which organization owns that camera um, that you passed by. And then that it was a Kentucky SUV. It got that it was a white Toyota. Um, with a regular license plate. Officials say they can look up a particular plate and even set up alerts for when it shows up. Again, that comes back into um, the investigative work. They can also search for cars in certain areas at certain times that may match suspect vehicle descriptions. Here in Hancock County, Indiana, it didn't take long for officials to realize they wanted more cameras. The sheriff's office went from six initially to 22 right now, and their goal is to have at least 50 cameras. Lexington's current contract is for 25. I'll show you how clear they are at night. It can still tell you um, if it's a, a GMC or a Dodge or a Ford pickup truck. But the technology comes with concerns. As people's information secure, if they're in a public space being documented by the police, there are concerns with how that data is used. There's also a concern of the placement because there is proof that communities of color are traditionally over policed and are these cameras going to be part of that or could they be used in another way the aclu of kentucky says it along with the naacp and human rights commission worked with lexington police on the department's policies and procedures for the cameras so we put our first six cameras here and then in indiana the where more communities already are using them including dozens of local agencies in the indianapolis area it's unclear whether the concerns in theory have turned into complaints in practice the aclu of indiana would not share whether it has received any legal complaints or documented any problems about the use of the cameras but law enforcement officials we talked to say it's been a helpful tool We've already seen the effect of this, that the, crim the criminals know that we have cameras on the west side of our county, like a big fence. So we've seen them, you know, take alternate routes and go through other counties to come in other ways to try to avoid the cameras. That's why their next step is continuing to close that fence. In Hancock County, Indiana, Garrett Weimer, WKYT.
Well, during a work session on Tuesday, Lexington's assistant police chief told council members officers were trained on the cameras earlier this month. The city's cameras are set to be installed next month. Well, this spring, work on repairing and restoring the dome that crowns the Kentucky State Capitol will begin. The work will require the construction of extensive scaffolding that will encircle the dome. Materials for the scaffolding will be delivered in early April and installation is expected to take two months. This project is long overdue and the structural integrity itself has come into question, meaning we can no longer wait to do it. The scaffolding will remain in place for around two years or until the project's completion. Six oh nine here on this Friday morning. Thank goodness it's Friday and we're coasting toward the weekend, but the rain chances are going to be along with us later this afternoon. Let's take a look right now. Tracking some fog this morning, especially into Harlan and over toward Somerset this morning. So be careful in those pockets out there where you're seeing a little bit of fog. Temperatures from the upper 30s in Clintwood, which is definitely the coldest temperature in our region this morning, to the 40s and 50s across the rest of the area. The Big Sandy a little warmer than the Cumberland Valley where they've seen mostly 40s instead of 50s down that way. 71 this afternoon. Chances for rain go up as we head deeper in the day in the nighttime hours. So some sunshine is likely early before those clouds move in. Rain chances increase through, not only today and tonight, but throughout the week, at least the first part of it. Cooler air will also move in, but spring is on the way at 1133 on a Sunday morning. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you so much. Well, it's almost 610. We come back here on Mountain News this morning. The Kremlin responds to some strong words from President Joe Biden. We'll have those details on the way.